We are back, everyone, with another round of Resident Evil 2, the board game. This is the final scenario of the core game, and this one looks to be freaking intense. Escaping the Laboratory The computer's mechanical, unfeeling voice is nearly drowned out by the shrieks of the monsters and the warning klaxons. Time is running out with the self-destruct sequence activated and relentlessly counting down. Only one last hurdle remains, the malformed creature that was once William Birkin. The end is finally in sight, escape is nigh, I gotta kill Birkin and be on the elevator control room, but that's where Birkin is. This is in the underground lab. This is where things get scary. Experimental creatures, we've already seen evolved liquors, now we're gonna have modified zombies as well. Now, you'll recall the difference between the liquor and the evolved liquor. The evolved liquor has more health, and Scything Claw, it moves two and attacks for three damage if I draw its special attack. The modified zombie, exactly the same, except I cannot push him if I fail to evade him. So basically the modified zombie is how I erroneously play the first five or six installments of this board game. Shouldn't be too different. Now, self-destruct sequence. The underground laboratory self-destruct sequence has been activated and is counting down. If ever the tension deck is exhausted, the scenario immediately ends in failure for the players as the laboratory explodes with the character still inside. Now. How is that any different from the scenarios except for scenario one or two? Well, I'll get into that shortly. At the start of the scenario, after creating and shuffling the tension deck, split the deck in half. Shuffle a countdown to explosion card into the bottom half for each ink ribbon in the player pool. So, one, I'm playing by myself. Then place the other half back on top. We'll get to that. And here's the other thing. We have no control over when the tension deck refreshes, so the pressure is on. Normally I start with an ink ribbon. Technically I guess I could put it on my character profile, but there are no typewriters in this scenario, so I really only have one shot at this. Starting items? A ton. Now this is designed to be split among multiple players, but I'm not doing that. So I have four first aid sprays, don't worry, it's fine. And a shotgun, and I start the game with the magnum. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. And I also could have access to the bow gun and the grenade launcher, but Leon cannot equip those. Speaking of which, I can find grenade rounds and even another grenade launcher, which is insane. If we're playing Claire and I think Kendo, then we'll have a double grenade party, but not for me. And item B has the, uh, the MO disc, which I will need to unlock the one locked door in the scenario, which leads to Birkin. Also... We have the rare red tile. We've seen yellow and amber a ton, but here's red. And I am starting over here. So there's me, and as you can see, there are no monsters on the map at all. Everything is encounters, except for, of course, Mr. William Birkin himself. But, because I'm so excited about being able to equip the Magnum for once, that means I actually get to use the red dice. I've never done this the entire campaign. Now the shotgun, we already know, you roll two dice for and anything that hits counts as damage. With the magnum, anything that hits counts as three damage. That's ludicrous. Although, it only rolls one red die, interestingly enough, and the game comes with two. There is no possible way that I can use two red dice at the same time, at least in the core set. I haven't looked at any of the expansions. I don't know if there's a rocket launcher or something where you roll two red dice, but I cannot roll two red dice in this scenario. It's just, it's interesting that they gave me two. Oh well. Now because I'm on a strict time limit, my goal is to find the MO disc which is in a B item thing. These are A items. I don't need to go in there. But the thing is, the A items could have magnum rounds and shotgun shells. That's basically the only thing I want. There are also healing items, but because I'm playing solo, I have freaking four first aid sprays. So, maybe I shouldn't bother with this room? I don't know. Now, up here, there's a potential contender. That's a B item. Over to the left, there's a potential contender. There's a B item. So whatever the case, I'd really... I'd, I'd better go. So let's go. One, two, three, four. That's my turn. No escape. Locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies but no characters. Place all enemies from this tile and adjacent tile closer. Well, there are no enemies on the entire map except for William Birkin, 
but a quirk with boss tokens is that they cannot leave the tile they're on. So this is effectively a green card for me, because I have not encountered anything yet. So I lucked out. Next turn. Open. Two. Yellow. And I have a slash through here, meaning I cannot go through the middle of this tile. So, we'll start by rolling the scary die. Worst possible scenario. One zombie safe for now. Place a persisting unease token on this tile, and the next time I walk onto this, I remove the token and roll another encounter. That sucks. So I could potentially have just infinite encounters. And, of course, I'm standing on a zombie, so that's cool. And I will also place a persisting unease token on here. I really don't want to fight the zombie. I want to hoard my ammo, so let's roll for an escape. Success. And I do push him, because I did escape. Um... I'll push him on the Persisting Unease, because 3-4, he moves. Clear. Clear in a manner of speaking, right? Next. 1, 2. Unfortunately, this is an Amber Tile. So. Better. One zombie. Damn, that's not very good. Lurch forward. All enemies on this tile and links perform a move reaction. Damn, no mercy. So, zombie, and he lurches forward. He's just on me, and this guy also moves closer as a result of my encounter. I haven't even done tension phase yet. I'm going to escape this guy, too. Oh, thank God. I do not want to screw this up, because if I mess up, I just take damage and nothing happens. I will push him out the door. Three, four. Move. Move. Golden. One. Two. Three. Green. Four. I'm actually going to risk ending the turn on the corpse. Art. Wow. That's a first. Hey, guess what? It's a zombie, and it attacks me because now it's its turn. Speaking of which... Move. Move. That did not go well. That did. You go away. That could have been worse, honestly. Prehensile Grasp. Place a Prehensile Grasp token next to me. At the start of my next activation, I must pass a basic evade or I just lose a turn. Wow, dude. I'm not going to put the token down because it's my turn now. Okay, we're good. I evaded it. It's effectively a green card for me. So now, as my first action... Oh, wait, no. As my first action... I'll discard my knife. That's not an action, but I'm just going to discard my knife, because, honestly, if it ever comes down to the knife, uh, it's game over. Let's, let's face it. Okay, so... I draw item B. There are only three of these. Could it be the MO disc? Uh, wow. Okay. Unlock stores locked by the MO disc. Guess what? I'm ready to beat the scenario. I don't have to go there at all. I can just... Well, I, I am going to have to go down this way anyway, but I don't have to grab any A items. I mean, again, maybe I should just for the fact that it's ammo that I'll need for a boss, but let's get the hell out of here anyway. One, two, three, four... I'll just end right there. So, no, you know what? Let's do this. Four, because action number two was closing that door. Let's do that. Try that on for size. Now, you move on to me. You move closer. And tension. Good. So, escape. Fail. I just take damage. Escape. Succeed. You're out of here. That's two actions. Three. Success. Four. One. One. Good. One. Two. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, I, that's going to be action two anyway, but persisting on ease. I roll for the yellow encounter. 
It's the same thing. One zombie and... Oh, no, 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 no. This is the yellow. Uh, one corpse and lurch forward. Okay, so these guys still move forward because it says linked tiles. I think regardless of whether the door is open. But I spawn a corpse. It's a good thing I set aside extra tokens for just such an occasion. So I guess I'll put this on this biohazard symbol. So that was action number two, three, four. And I close the door so nobody hears me. And oh, this is this is a game ender. Entangling vines. Because there are, there are no blue herbs in this scenario. Place the active character on the closest empty biohazard, which moves me one space away. That wastes my space a little bit. Or a linked tile. Nah, that's still not the closest space. Too bad. So I must pass a basic evade check or suffer one damage, and this poisons. So ba basically, if I fail this evade roll, then I just let's just say I instantly lose the scenario because there's no recovering from this. What's I think supposed to happen is I'm playing two players. I'll go unconscious, and player two uses a first aid spray on me. This is the only entangling vines card in the set, so this is supposed to be like a major inconvenience. Okay, I, I lose the game. It's over. It's just over. So let's let's retroactively say, oh my god, great success. Okay, now I'm going to continue the scenario. One. Yellow. Three. One zombie. This is why there are no zombies placed on the map. I'm spawning them left and right. You know, I don't think I actually gave you a really good look at the tables, but look at this. Empty, corpse, corpse, zombie, 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 safe for now, zombie, two zombies, two zombies, liquor, safe for now, safe for now, all corpses become zombies, two zombies. Like, it's ridiculous. So anyway, this was uh, one movement. So, two. Success. Three, four. Move. Clear. One, two. Yellow. Three. What is that again? Is it the same thing as before? Just one zombie, straight up. So that's, um. How did I do this? One, two, three, four, one, two... Okay, so three... Oops, I moved the whole room. Three... Four. You're off. I'm here. You move. You move. I suffer one damage. And tension. Good. One... Two. Green. Three. Four. Okay. Not so bad. And no one hears me. I'm on a new floor. Green. This could potentially be the shortest scenario. It's just that I have no ammo. Uh, you know what? Action number one. Let's free up some space. First aid spray. That's two health back. Which is perfect for me. Two. Yellow. I think that's not as bad as it looks. One, oh, no, it is bad. One zombie and safe for now, so persisting unease. So it's one zombie, and the next time I enter this tile, I roll an encounter again, except that I'm never coming back to this tile. But I'll... If I could find the token here. There's the token. I'll put it down anyway. Two. Good. Three, four, one. Good. One. What's my item? Come on, magnum rounds. Red herb. Well, now I have to find a green herb to make that any kind of useful. That's not great. But anyway, one, two, three. And now the scariest tile in the game. Four. And I'm standing on a biohazard symbol, so this is even scarier. This is the red tile. Things could go very badly. 
that's as good as it's going to get. Safe for now. Persisting unease. Boy, did I luck out. I don't even know if I have another persisting unease token. I guess I'll just put this here as well, but you know I'm not coming back. That That is as good as it gets. So what did I do now? One, two, three... No, I did pick up, two, three, four... Okay, that's my turn. So, move. Nothing. I'm getting lucky. I'm probably going to just blast through the scenario. Uh, let's do... One, two, three... Um, discard the red herb because you know this is going to be useless. Unless I draw uh, a green herb right now. Four. Grenade launcher, which I can't even use. I'll just discard it right now. And I have to roll because I'm standing on a corpse. Four. So, not bad. Is there anything I want to do from here? I, I really have to go way out of my way in order to get in here. Like, this is like a last resort room. I mean, I, there's no way I ever have to enter that amber room. It just has handgun bullets and a first aid spray. But this stuff could be ammo. Eh? But I'm just going to finish this. I passed the test. I think, um, did I close the door? Yes, I did. Uh, I, th I forgot if I drew a card. Let's just do it. Good. I don't think I'm going to get to the countdown to explosion, which is kind of nice. One. Two. I guess they do give me one free item. Three. Don't worry, it's green because it's all the buildup. Four. Uh, I guess you move. I guess you would have moved twice, right? Because I didn't move in the last turn. And tension, golden. Actually, come to think of it, let's just do this here real quick. One, two, three, four. Come on, ammo. <laughs> well, that's a monkey's paw right there. Toss it, and uh, zombie no longer hears me. All clear. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the final encounter. One two and we are bossing so here's the deal with William Birkin he should have 20 HP but as I'm doing solo play mode reduce all boss health dials by 10 so he has 10 HP so I'm gonna just unload everything I have on him I'll start with the small stuff I'll do shotgun what did I just do by the way to get in here one, two. Okay, I have two actions left. So I have two blue dice. All I need is one hit. That's really all that I need. Although, come to think of it, if I roll two bullet holes with, like, two dice, would I deal two damage? I think I would. Uh, well, I missed anyway. And... Does he move toward me? Yes, okay, so we're going to need to look up William Burke in Stage 3, right? First of all, unstoppable. After an attack is resolved against me, it performs a move toward the active character. And his move is just 1, but he, as you can see, he has 20. I mean, 10 health. Now, Deadly Pursuit, after resolving an attack, we'll deal with that later. And Horrific Mutation, we'll deal with that later. So I missed. So he's just like, wham. It's terrifying. Let's attack again, and not screw it up this time. It's not great, but it's something. Nine. Take that, Mr. Birkin, and I have... Shotgun. Three. Ugh, this is what I get when I have zero contingency plans. And that was another attack. So he moves toward me. Now it's his turn. Let's see what happens. Berserk swing. Oh, that sounds healthy. So, he does... What does that two mean with a tentacle? Does that mean... Well, in any case, it swings for two damage. It would hit everyone who's in the vicinity. But what's the tentacle thing? And I need a level two uh, roll to escape it. But I gotta remind myself of what the, the weird little tentacle sign was. Oh, all. That's what all means. So that would hit 
everybody within range of the attack. But also, there's the hands grabbing, right? It's rather surprising that they don't have an easily uh, answered thing for this. Like, there it is, you can see it. Unless it just means, I mean, I see, like, the evade icon going through it. This means all, or I guess that means, like, it swings for two players? I don't know. But in any case, I gotta avoid his berserk swing, and I need a level two escape. Remember, that means rolling a level two, or that means rolling two level ones. Uh, I did roll a level two, so I evade the attack. That's good. Now... Deadly Pursuit. After resolving a behavior card with an attack profile where Stage 3 was, oh, unable to attack. Does this even tell me what the range for this thing is? Unless that is the range? Like, all with a range of 2, perhaps, what that means? So whatever, it was within range. We're good. I don't know, it's just driving me crazy here. I feel that I should know what that is. Oh well. Anyway, I will run away from him because I have to, or else he'll just resolve a move action on me and beat my ass. Although, come to think of it, come to think of it. No, 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 because the move, if he's within range, he'll just beat my ass. So, one, I will attack with my shotgun again. I have three shots. Wow, good game. Two. He moves closer. Uh, three, four. There we go. So, I will draw a new card for him. And it says, it's another Berserk Swing, actually. But he can't reach me. So, after resolving a behavior card with an attack profile where Stage 3 was unable to attack, resolve the Reflex Slash Reference card. Well, you know what? I just so happen to have this. So reflex slash reference card. Place him in a square occupied by the next character to activate on this tile and resolve a push against me. And also he just does he just does like a blast. So it's really scary. I basically want to stay within range of this guy because if I don't, he does a level three attack on me, and it's horrible. So that's cool. So I guess I need to roll a level three to evade one damage. It's only one damage, but damn. So Boom, and he pushes me away. Let's make it a little easier on myself and push me here. But I gotta evade a super attack. Which I actually do. That's genuinely incredible. Now it's my turn. So let's do this. One. Shotgun. Okay. Two damage. Finally, something's actually happening. Boom, boom. He's at seven. He moves closer to me. Three. Oh, did I reduce my shotgun ammo? I did not, I don't think. One. And then my final shotgun attack, and my final move of the turn, bad, good. Six. This is actually really disastrous, though. This, this is not going well for me. So my shotgun's out. I'm, I'm done. So let's just, I'll, I'll bring it back to five for some future playthrough. This token is out of here. I'll just get rid of my card so I can intentionally forget that I had it. And he moves toward me as a reflex. Now it is his turn. Impale. Oh, that sounds good. It is a level 2 escape, and if it connects, it is a ludicrous 4 damage. I mean, surprise, surprise, he's a tyrant, but, like, I can just draw this card? Are you kidding me? Alright, so level 2 escape, for the love of God. Okay, so I guess we're doing this. Boom! Alright, now it's my turn. Turn one. Heal a little bit. That's one of my three first aid sprays gone. Uh, I should point out, by the way, that because I'm playing solo mode... Remember, I've done, the, I've done this before. Any attack which would kill me reduces my track to red danger instead, unless I'm already on danger. So no matter how low my health is, as long as it's above the bare minimum, I get a freebie. So that's one action. Two. And now I will handgun it up. And I will use three bullets for this. 
Miserable. Good. Incredible. Uh, okay, so let's do this. 15, 14, 13, 12. And then 2 damage, magically. 5, 4. Okay, he moves toward me. And then 4. I draw a card. This is where I would draw Impale and hope that it misses, and then he does a reflex swing. Combo strikes. What the? With a range of 2. Damn, he could actually connect with me, too. 2, 2, and 1. So, I'm not getting hit by the third shot, but I could get hit by the second and first. So I need a level 3 escape for both. My god, no mercy. A maximum of 2 damage, but damn, dude. Like, I, I intentionally have not looked at these cards before playing the game so I could be surprised, and I'm surprised. So level 3 escape? Yeah! Can I do it again? Unbelievable! I actually just totally avoided that. And because even though he's two spaces away, that reached, I don't have to worry about the reflex strike. That is about as good as it gets. I will attack with my handgun again and just hope to god I get the bullet count. I actually... No. I can't risk running out of ammo at a time like this. I will use the Magnum. One red die. If it hits, it hits hard. Let's do that. Thank god. Alright, so that is one fewer Magnum ammo. That is... 1 HP. He moves closer. Let's do that. That's my first action. Now I will do 2. Handgun. Now I'm back to the handgun. Bad, bad, bad. I mean, I pushed the guy. 2. He moves closer as a result of my actions. I go down to... Nine. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta check something about bosses, now that I think about it. Oh, bosses cannot be pushed. Bosses cannot be pushed. That didn't happen. So I did not push him, I just shot him and nothing happened. He moves closer. So now I'll do three, four. Let's do that. I can't attack him again. I mean, I can, but I'll be risking getting blasted. So I draw jump slash. Jeez, no mercy with this guy. Only a range of one, though. He cannot hit. Place him in the square occupied by the next character to activate. Oh. No, he just reaches me. He's just on me. Alright. But it only is for one damage. So, ha, boosh. He pushes me away. And he takes a swing at me, which I need a level 3 to avoid. Which I do. This is ridiculous. Okay, now it's my turn. One. Now I'll use my three handgun bullets. Oh, zero. Do 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 do. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Birkin stage three. Horrible mutation. The health dial for Birkin stage three begins on twenty. The first time is reduced to zero. We're set it to twenty-five. And shuffle the decapitation, decapitation, the decapitation card into the behavior deck draw pile. Oh goody! So I gotta hit him, bring him to zero again. But remember, he's not going to 25, he's going to 15. But that's still awful. So th this is symbolic of him evolving into stage 4. I'm at 6 bullets, by the way. Because remember, stage 4 is his final form at the end of Scenario 1. There actually is a stage 4 Birkin card, I believe, in some expansion set. But I don't have it, so you just have to use your imagination for this one. So... That was my first action. I have to now take the Decapitation card. This is a wonderful card. It has a range of one. And if it hits me, I'm dead. Technically, this is the unconscious symbol, so another player could revive me, but I'm playing solo. So I'm dead if this hits me. I'm just dead. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle his behavior cards now. Here, Decapitation. Here's my other cards. What did I not draw? Brutal Claws... Brutal Claws is the only new attack we have not uh, seen. So, I'm going to put the camera down and shuffle of all things. Oh, you know what just occurs to me? I haven't been drawing tension cards. That's embarrassing. I should do that. That's really embarrassing. I've taken, what, like three or four turns with this guy? I'm sorry. One, Crimson Thirst. Enemy attacks would deal an additional one damage. 
Uh, I don't remember what turn that was, so let's just say that it worked. Uh, two, good. Three, prehensile grasp. At the start of my next turn, I must pass an evade roll or I lose a turn. And C was fine the whole time. Four, I don't know. Now let's just say I draw... Let's just do that. I couldn't have spent more than four turns on him. I completely forgot about the tension cards. It's freaking embarrassing. Anyway, my first action was to attack him. He moves toward me. Action two. Action three. I will use up my pistol ammo, or no, I will use more pistol ammo. I will use three of my remaining six bullets as my fourth action. Uh, okay. All right. One. And handgun ammo is down to three. Actually, you know what? I gotta see something. I'm actually curious. Well, well, hold on. He moves toward me. He'll do his reaction, which is combo strikes, which is not good. He could hit me with all three of these. So I need to roll a level three, a level three, and a level two escape. I actually avoid. Nope. That was for one damage. Not that it really matters. I should have healed. Now I need a level two escape. Oh, thank God. All right, and uh, tension. All clear. Hey, I got an idea. Heal. That's action number one. Uh, action number two... Because, like, the thing is, if I run out of ammo, I'm going to have to leave the room and look for ammo or get my knife back. Uh, actually, I threw my knife away. Ooh, I might have screwed myself. I really might have just ended the game for myself. Anyway, two... Last of my handgun bullets. Good. Nothing. Thirteen. This is really not good. Uh, okay, the handgun is out. Let's just say it's out. You know what? I'm actually going to put my shotgun dial back in case... Let's pretend I never discarded the gun because I still have room in my inventory. Let's actually hold on to this in case I need to run away and just go item hunting, which is ridiculous. Well, let me see something with bosses. I know they can't leave the tiles, but am I allowed to leave? Bosses have special rules. My boss does this. Oh, I can't leave until the boss has been killed. Okay. Nope, guess what? Shotgun's gone. Handgun's gone. Alright. Desperation. I have five magnum shots. And I must hit with all five. If I don't, then I lose. That's how this game is going to go. Anyway, I hit him. Three, four. His turn. Jump slash, so he's just on me. And I need a level three to uh, evade that. And, and I got it, unbelievably. Um, and tension. Cool. One, two. If I miss any magnum shot, then it's just game over. It's just a failure. Okay, I lose. I lose the entire scenario. That's it. Because I have five shots, and four shots do 12 damage, and he has 13 left. That's it. I lose the scenario. Let's pretend I hit. Whoa, I got him! Ten. So that was my second action. He does a move, but he takes a swing at me because it's with, with um, not just as he does a move though. A move. Well, yeah, he takes a turn. That's what it is. Berserk swing. Um, range of two, level two to escape. It does two damage. Nope, level one, two damage. Okay, tension. Good. Uh, last of my healing items. That's cool. That's one. Um... Oh, wait a minute! My turn hadn't ended yet. That was his reaction to me. So, let's do... Yeah, three. And now I'll attack with the Magnum again. Whoa, I hit him! Uncanny! My accuracy is unbelievable. So I now have three shots left. Seven. And now... He moves as a result of that, and now he uh, 
actually draws so another berserk swing. I need a level two to evade for two damage. <laughs> Perfect. And now I would draw the tension card, so that was clear. Fine, we're good. Now, one, Magnum. Whoa, I hit him. I'm so accurate. How do I do it? Four. Two shots left. He moves as a result. Um, three, four. He draws... Decapitation, range of one. Thank God I don't even have to try to evade that. For morbid curiosity, let's just see what would have happened, though. Yeah, that would have just insta-killed me. That's freaking insane. But that doesn't happen. Instead, we get Reflex Slash, so he jumps on me. And now I need a level three to avoid him, which I probably won't. No, I got a level five, which doesn't exist. I got, I, I evaded him, we're good. Um, my turn. One, two. Oh no, that would have cost me the scenario. Oh my god. Wha oh, I hit him. Incredible. One HP left. One shot left. How dramatic. Uh, listen, learn people, this is why you take a couple of those extra turns and go ammo hunting. Because I could have kept the knife, but give me a freaking break. I only get one die roll to do a two bullet hit for one damage. Mm, that's not happening. So, um... Three. Or no, that, that was his reaction to my second movement. And then it all comes down to this. My last attack. If I miss it, I'm dead, even though I've already lost the scenario three times. Oh my god, I beat him on my first try. Complete success. How did I do it? William Burke and his day, ladies and gentlemen, I beat the scenario. Now, just to show you, by the way, I never did get the countdown to explosion card. How far away was I? Actually, generously far. Again, I hadn't done any exploration, so I got away with a lot of this. Very generously far. I, I swear I actually shuffled this. Have we gotten Hideous Screech before? Oh, just spawn a liquor. Yep, that sucks. Glad I didn't have that. Okay. Countdown to explosion. The grainy voice continues to count down, straining against the blaring klaxon. Time is running out. This is actually pretty scary. This is the only way to shuffle the deck. Remove this card and two green cards from the game, then shuffle your tension deck. So this is your ink ribbon. You get your tension deck back, but minus two green cards. And if I'm playing two players, then I have two of these cards in here. So I could get another countdown and have an even smaller deck. There's no typewriter, so drawing this card actually gets me a full deck again, but it's a little more dangerous each time. Anyway, that takes care of the eighth scenario. I definitely did not fail it three times. I absolutely succeeded on my first try, which means this is the last page in the book. So what happens after scenario eight? Congratulations! I got an S rank! That was totally deserved and not cheated! Clear game! Resident Evil 2, the board game. Total time, for some reason, 28 days. Number of saves, zero. The perfect score, ladies and gentlemen. I maxed it. What a pro I am. And this is interesting, campaign mode tracker, if you were playing campaign mode, you're not doing all eight of these sessions in one shot, so you can write down your inventory and those carryover items, like the, uh, the loose wire or whatever it was called, the, like the cord, and the, uh, the custom handgun. So you can have fun doing story mode with this game, which is pretty cool. But there you have it. This is Resident Evil 2, the board game, the base set, and that is all eight scenarios. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we're completely done with this game. Until next time, everyone.